it's time for part three. So here we are. Um, next up in my knitting down my acrylic yarn stash uh, is going to be another pattern that I can make uh, with uh, acrylic yarn and this time I'm going to make an accessory. So if you haven't watched my first two parts because it's the third part of this series, um, make sure to check them out. Uh, I think I made a playlist of them. But there's two parts out, one where I made the boulevard bag and the other one where I made the festival sweater, uh, the kids version. Um, and now I'm going to make an accessory. Uh, I was thinking to make one of those like necks, you know what I mean? Like I was talking about it with a friend who doesn't knit and she was like, what are you talking about? But this is what I'm talking about, these kind of things. And I was thinking to make the terrazzo neck by Petite Knit. Um, it's going to be a gift for my mom. It's like almost summer now and her her birthday is in the summertime. Last year I made her this really thick wool sweater and now I'm going to make her another winter accessory. But yeah, I like to knit so then you're going to get uh, something like that <laughs> for your birthday. So this time I'm going to use uh, this yarn, this ochre yarn. I actually made a top in this, like a, a t-shirt. So here's the t-shirt that I made. It's a raglan t-shirt and it fits super nicely, but it's made with acrylic yarn. And this is when I figured out that I can't wear uh, acrylic yarn close to my armpits, but it is a super nice t-shirt and I'm really happy with how it fits. It just, I never wear it because I get very, very stinky. So <laughs> uh, this is what I actually, yeah, already made with that yarn. Um, I think I did it for uh, a knit along with Bellish when it still exists for Tiffany of Typical Bliss, like a little knit along, a lot of dust. Okay. <laughs> But I still have some left over. I have about three balls left over. Um, and I actually already made the first part of it, which is the, I'm going against the pattern. <laughs> so I downloaded the pattern and I was um, looking at the instructions and it said to knit up from the down of the back, like the bottom of the back and then up and then leave stitches for your uh, shoulders. But since I don't know if I have enough yarn to make the full length that they want you to make, I wanted to start, I wanted to do the whole thing top down. So I just started with the left front, then I'm gonna do the right front, put them together, then pick up stitches for the back and then knit down, start knitting the huge, huge um, twisted rib, uh, color and then uh, I'll see <laughs> so that's the plan um yeah I'll just go into uh casting on the right front because this is done now so I'll just go and do that I have a little extra thing I wanted to do this time because I'm showing something now that I have never showed before. It is a, a blanket. And I started this blanket to knit up my acrylic yarn stash. So as you can see, I was switching colors every now and then, and I was using up all these like little strands of yarn and it's a very nice and loose holy uh, blanket. It's super long, like super duper duper long. <laughs> I don't actually know how long it is. 
I think if I get a little farther, then I can see how long it is. But um, I did start this. So this is now attached, these three white yarns. And um, I was doing, I was making sure that I was like, had stockinette on one side and then only had a little pearl bump when I switched colors. And on the sides, I was doing, I think two, okay, that's, that's not, that's the side where I change colors. <laughs> uh, I was doing two, um, like slip stitches to create kind of like an I-cord edge, I think. I'm not even sure what I was doing here. Oh no, here you can see, I slipped the last two stitches, I think. I think. Okay, I'll, I'll figure this out. Oh, I was doing a little double knitting. So I did like slip, knit one, slip one. Okay, I figured it out. I'll tell you more about it uh, when I do more of this. The only thing that I'm gonna change is here, I was doing a lot of purling too. Uh, now I'm just gonna knit everything and just make it garter stitch. And I'll do like, at the end, I'll do the same as this. So I'll do a little bit of stockinette again. So it like kind of evens out, but there's another thing that I can show you. I don't think I will finish this in this part, but I'll just knit on it and you'll see it included in this video. And I'll just knit on it in all the parts that I'm making. So I think that'll be nice. Um, yeah. I am getting super cozy, so excuse the extra coziness, or maybe you enjoy it. I'm really tired. I don't know if you can tell. But uh, I felt like I was knitting on this for a little bit now, and I felt like I needed to share a little bit more about my progress because it's going so fast. So um, what I did is 
I, instead of starting, I think I already shared this, instead of starting all the way at the bottom of the back, knitting up over the shoulders and then down the front, I decided I need to knit everything top down because I don't know if I have enough yarn and I just want to use up all the yarn that I have of this colorway. So I started with the two fronts, joined them together, knit a little bit until there was a knot in my yarn. So I cut the yarn there and then I picked up stitches for the back and now I'm just working down the back. So basically all I'm doing is like the construction I'm kind of making of myself, like I am following the instructions, but I'm kind of doing it a little bit off pattern. So my plan is to knit up this bit for the back and then um, start by doing the collar because I think the collar will have the most yarn in it because it has this really long, super twisted rib. <laughs> um, uh, collar um, like a turtleneck it has like a twisted rib like a full twisted rib so you have to purl and knit through the back loop so I've already been doing that here on the sides if you can see it's really not that bad I feel like it's always oh twisted rib but I feel like it's not too bad um, I'm just gonna knit the whole turtleneck after finishing this little bit up um so yeah that's what i'm gonna do i'm watching nitty natty right now her give, big wardrobe giveaway thing i don't know if you watched it but it's really interesting she's getting rid of so much stuff can't believe it i don't i'm not ready for that yet <laughs> how about you <laughs> Like I'm really like really interested if people can let go of their uh, their yarn e uh, or their knits really easily because for me that won't be easy to do at all I don't think I was like thinking I just saw that she's gonna give away her Alpenglow and I've knitted an Alpenglow I would not want to get rid of mine just because I think it's such an achievement to make something like that it's just like. But on the other hand, I was thinking of yeah, some sweaters I do like to wear, but not really care about. Maybe it's something interesting to think about for the future. Like if I want to give them away. I think I'd rather give, give them away than um, frogging them for the yarn. Because I feel like I like to get new yarn. Like I have a lot of yarn in stash. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. So that's a little thought that's popping up right now all right I'll just keep knitting
update time. I have finished the collar. So I rolled it up because I think that looks super nice and finished. And here you can see how far I got on the back. So this collar almost took an entire ball of yarn. So this is the next one that I have and it's the last one. And then I have a, like a tiny little bit left over, but I'm going to use that as a buffer if I run out of yarn while doing an Italian bind off. Speaking of which, I tried for the first time, I tried, it's not this, but I did try the tubular bind off. So that's when you prepare, in this case, you prepare like four rows. You do like a double knitting basically. So I did like purl one, uh, knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, and then the next round you did the purls and you slipped the knit stitches. But I have got to say, and I'm super confused about that because it was super tight. So I spent a lot of time ripping everything out and then I had to pick up twisted stitches and that's hard because <laughs> it's like hard to see if they're twisted the right way. Like I can see when a stitch is twisted, but I don't know which way, if that makes sense. But it worked out fine. And then I did an Italian bind off, which is like the final step of a tubular bind off. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the information that I have. And I like the way that looks. I'm fine with that. So I don't think I'll try a tubular bind off anymore. No, <laughs> because I started the Italian bind off part and then I tried to like stretch it and it was so stiff. So I don't know the point of doing that. So, but let me know if you do know the point um, of a tubular bind off because it seems you kind of have like half of the stitches for a few rows before you do an Italian bind off. So in my mind, that makes it super um, non-stretchy. Well, that's the whole point of doing a sewn bind off, right? Anyway, so an Italian bind off, for those of you who don't know, an Italian bind off is like a sewn bind off. So you go with a darning needle, you go through all your stitches. Kind of similar to a Kitchener stitch, the steps, at least in my opinion, I think they're very similar. Um, so yeah, I uh, used up the rest of that skein on the back here. And I was just at my mom's house, the nice summer yard feeling from the previous clips. Um, were there and I asked her if she she wants uh, more fabric on the front or on the back so if her chest or her back is colder because I don't think I have enough to make the whole full uh, terrazzo neck like the pattern says so I think I'm just gonna knit the front until I'm satisfied until it goes like over over the boob area basically um, and then whatever I've left, I'll put on the back because the back is already kind of a nice length anyway. So I'll be okay if just putting a ribbing here. Um, but she liked the front to be longer. I wanted to keep it a secret, but I am a little bit, uh, I don't have that much time left. So I needed to spend the time that I was at her house that I could spend knitting, uh, knitting on this. So I was like, okay, it was supposed to be a, uh, uh, like a little surprise, but here you go. <laughs> it's going to be your birthday present. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I'm just going to continue undoing this and, uh, yeah, go on knitting.
It is done. <clears throat> Yay. Oh, it was a long, uh, well, it wasn't necessarily long, but I, I am flying to the US tomorrow. I'll be there when you see this, but I wanted to finish it before that. So I'm really happy that I did. I'll just, just put it on quick. <sighs> so here we have the super long neck that I made a little bit shorter than the pattern says to do. So that's that. Then the front, like I said, I did a different order on, so I started the two fronts. So I started here, knit it down, joined in the round or joined together the fronts, then picked up the stitches for the back and then knit it down. So the front, I basically did according to pattern. I did, uh, there's some decreases here. I did as much as I needed to. Um, the ribbing, I didn't look at what the pattern said, but I just did uh, this long. <laughs> and another Italian bind off. And for the back, okay, I have to take it off again. <laughs> uh, the back is a little shorter than the front. Um, because I was scared of running out of yarn and I wanted to make sure that I had enough for the ribbing. So I made the ribbing just like the exact same length as the front ribbing, but the flap on the back is a lot shorter than on the front. See? But that's okay. I have, I do have some yarn left, but not a lot. I think, yeah, this is all I have left. Here's an, another string. So this is all the yarn I have left. Uh, so I basically just used three skeins of yarn uh, for this, three balls of yarn. Um, here's some ticking, that's my hamster. <laughs> so just so you know <laughs> what the noise is. Um, yeah, so I think my mom is gonna be really happy with it. Um, I'm just gonna uh, wrap it up and uh, gift it to her after I get back. But yeah, I'm super, super happy with how it turned out. And I'm surprised of how much yarn I actually uh, ended up, um, how far the yarn got me in the pattern because I basically just made the whole pattern. So that's really nice. I used a whole ball of, uh, of that yarn for the collar, so that's, crazy. And there's another thing I need to show you. And that is this one. I did exactly one row. I'm a little bit in the time crunch. So maybe this wasn't the moment to start this, but at least you've seen it now and I can uh, continue working on this in the next part of this series. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Let me know your thoughts below. Um, if you want to join me on doing the acrylic yarn stash down, uh, I'm planning on uh, doing a little knit along uh, in July after I get back. So maybe in August uh, we'll start doing that. So if you're interested in that, let me know down below and then I'll, uh, I can make sure to set that up. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, happy July and I hope to see you uh, soon. Bye.